Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the possible pattern change that I've been talking about for a while now that's going to occur sometime after the 20th of September. It's going to really kill this heat wave and bring in some more cooler air, at least to the eastern United States. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask you to do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description, especially the Instagram. I'll leave that in the pinned comment. We're growing that right now and we bring a lot of exclusive content to that. So it's super Super awesome. You should definitely check that out. Now we're looking at the GFS Ensemble Model PNA oscillation here, and you can see this is kind of the values uh, of this oscillation. You can see the line, that black line is actually the average, and that would be like a neutral PNA. If it goes below it, that's what we'd consider a negative PNA, and if it goes above it, it's what we'd consider a positive PNA. So you can see this does, and this extends from the 11th, which is today, all the way until the 27th. So you can see within that time frame, we do have a big switch with this oscillation. I'm also going to get into a lot of what this oscillation is and the effects that it has on the United States just after this. But as of right now, you can see we're at a very, very weak negative PNA, but that's going to go very far negative by about the 16th and then start to move into positive territory by the 20th. And then by the 24th, we're at a very positive PNA, which means we're going to completely flip the the European model also has this. So all the models agree with this. Now, here's a look at a negative PNA. Basically, what a negative PNA would be is this big trough right up against the California coast, right on right on shore of the western United States, basically. And with the trough set up right there, typically we would end up seeing a ridge for the eastern United States, bringing extremely warm temperatures so you can see this is basically the main driver in this heat wave we have going on right now, as you can see. And this map is actually from our upcoming pattern. So I wanted to use kind of what's in the next 10 days or so as examples, because we are going to be seeing a negative and positive PNA within that time frame. Usually these like to stick around and stay positive or stay negative, but we're seeing it go all over the place. So we get to see both sides of the spectrum here. Anyway, this is the look of a negative PNA. Now, here's the look of a positive PNA, and you can see it's actually polar opposites. We have very positive heights here up against the California coast right in Washington. And then you can see we have a trough, a big time trough for the eastern United States. And this is the effect that we would feel with a positive PNA. And this is by the 26th. So again, it switches, I think I said around the 24th will be in positive PNA, very far positive PNA territory. And as you can see here, this is the effect that we would feel from this. So this is Thursday, September 26th, pretty far in the future here, but this is the uh, typical effect you would feel from a positive PNA. We have pretty high confidence that the PNA is going to be going positive at some point here coming up after the 20th. So this isn't too far fetched. Now, our next oscillation we're going to be looking at that's going to be switching is the AO. And obviously this one doesn't switch as dramatically. We have it in slightly positive territory up until about eh, about the 16th, and then we see it go negative. That green line is the mean average of all the ensemble members, by the way, so that's going to be your most uh, evened out, most likely outcome, most likely. And you can see it stays negative from the 16th all the way to the 27th. So again, a lot of these oscillations, we see them flip and then stay positive or negative for quite a long time. We've seen this be positive for quite a while now. Now it's going to go negative and likely stay that way for quite a while as well. Now, uh, positive AO, what we would see is negative heights in the Arctic regions of the, of the world. And I know it seems kind of opposite positive, but you actually see negative heights. It's kind of confusing, but this is the look of a positive AO. And when all that cold air is stuck up in the Arctic, we don't really see any big troughs around the world. You'll notice there's only, I would say there's only one decent trough, and that's for the New England states and the areas in eastern Canada there. But besides that, you see a lot of just evened out jet stream around the northern hemisphere. And this is because all that cold is bottled up in the Arctic. Now, the opposite of this is a negative AO. And you can see that we have positive heights for the Arctic regions of the northern atmosphere. And we see these four big troughs. Typically, it's I, I think it's anywhere from two to maybe five troughs, but four is the most common. And we see that set up here on the 20 by the 21st of September. You can see we by this point, we still don't have that positive 
PNA yet, so we don't really see cold in the eastern United States yet, but we do see these four troughs around the northern atmosphere because the, that cold air is forced out of the Arctic regions and we see it go elsewhere to areas further south than we normally see that colder air. So this is really what drives the patterns in the northern hemisphere really and in the United States as well, even though we don't really have a trough there as of right now with that uh, PNA not really being in a favorable phase yet. And then we see our NAO, which you can see is very par far positive and is going to head towards neutral or negative status here. So this is our next oscillation. And we're going to take a look at as well what effects this one would have. So you can see here we have a positive AO there. Uh, what this would mean is negative heights there by Greenland and Iceland. And then we see these positive heights there just to the west of Europe in the Atlantic Ocean. And what this would lead to is ridging in the eastern United States. And if you take a look there at the eastern United States, you can see that there is pretty decent ridging right there for that eastern United States region. And this really leads to, uh, again, warmer temperatures for the eastern United States. And this is a lot of why we're seeing that big ridge, big, big heat wave in the eastern United States for this middle portion of September and you can see this is only 12 hours out so this is actually like right now actually is kind of what's happening uh, and then here's a negative NAO look and you can see it's completely different for the eastern United States we have these positive heights there just to the south of Greenland and really this is looks to be a lot of what we're going to actually see in the upcoming pattern for fall and winter time with those warmer temperatures we have in the northern Atlantic by Greenland by Iceland that's going to encourage warmer air temperatures just above those waters and also positive heights there which will really drive to a negative NAO a lot of the time and you can see here this is pretty far out on an ensemble model but we do see these pretty positive heights which again is a negative NAO I know it's confusing that it's a negative oscillation in a positive geopotential height it's kind of confusing but you kind of get used to it uh, after a while. But this is the look of a negative NAO, and you can see there is that big ridge in the western United States and a big trough in the eastern United States. This could be a pretty common look coming up for this fall and winter time. The reason this trough is so deep in the eastern United States is this actually lines up perfectly with our very, very positive PNA. And when those two match up and the AO looks favorable too, we see a deadly trio of oscillations that can bring pretty potent troughs to the eastern United States. One thing I wanted to say since this is kind of an educational video on these oscillations and a lot of people might uh, start paying more attention to the oscillations as they probably know more about them now after watching this video. The NAO and the AO usually correlate a lot of the time so when you see a negative AO you are pretty likely to see a negative NAO at the same time. That isn't always the case but it is a kind of a correlation that we do see with the oscillations. The PNA, I, I usually that one can go either way when there's a positive or negative NAO and AO. The I wouldn't say the PNA correlates, but when we do see a positive PNA paired with a negative NAO and negative AO, that does lead to some pretty nasty troughs in the eastern United States. With that warm, very warm air in the western United States and the warm air to the north of the United States, the cold basically has nowhere to go except for the eastern United States when you see those three match up. So it is exciting when we do see these oscillations look to pair up perfectly and it can really bring some nasty, nasty cold air to the eastern United States and very, very warm conditions in the western United States, especially the PNA. The PNA is basically what the temperatures and the heights look like up against the west coast of the United States. So your temperatures are almost directly affected by this oscillation or actually this oscillation is directly affected by your temperature. So in a positive PNA, you can expect to see very, very warm temperatures along the west coast of the United States. And in a negative PNA, you can expect to see cold and stormy conditions for the western United States. So it almost correlates, or it actually does correlate directly with your weather if you do live there, which is very interesting. Anyway, guys, I hope you really learned something from this video. I've been doing some more of the educational videos here. I think like last year we did some with a lot of different videos. I'm trying to think. We did some on nor'easters, like we did Miller A, Miller B, what those different terms mean. If you have anything else you want to learn about 
with the oscillations and different types of stuff. Let me know in the comments of this video as I am going to be bringing a lot more of these educational videos when I can't some find anything. Like today was a day where I'm like, I don't really have a video to make about the weather. There's no giant hurricane coming. There's no severe weather. There's no snowstorm. So I was able to find the time to make these videos. And in the fall season, I will find a lot of time like this, most likely where there is days where I can just make a video about, you know, patterns in general and all sorts of educational things. So if there is anything you've ever wondered about weather that you'd like me to make a video about, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make that when I find another day like this. Uh, this video is kind of about this pattern that's coming up, kind of about education, but I still am going to be making a educational video about all the oscillations individually. I still will be making a PNA video, AO video, NAO video, things like that. This doesn't replace that, but this was more of an educational video. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.